This season, some of us wait for surprises, some long for peace and healing along with it. Some enter into this time with joy, others with painful memories. I hear this story of a valley of dry bones becoming reanimated, renewed and remembered, and you hear all of that. Grace and peace to you from God our Father in heaven and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. This time last year, of course, as we prepared for online worship in Advent, we wondered how long we'd be waiting just to be together again in the same places and spaces. We could not have foreseen another COVID Christmas. And while we are able to gather this year, we keep the masks on for the safety of our neighbors, those more fragile, while we wait to see what this virus will do next. We can be uneasy. The prospect of more suffering is not what we had planned or hoped for. And we hope and pray we're moving in the right direction, getting more vaccinated, mild symptoms from this new variant. We pray and hope. We just can't see what the future will bring. For now, we follow Jeremiah's advice to the people in exile we heard this last week. Build homes, grow families, serve neighbors in the city where we live. It's what we can do. And life is happening. We were so glad to honor Pastor Charlie Bowker, his work this week with Family Promise that began here in this place more than 25 years ago. I'm grateful that he and Peggy could travel to be with us. Pretty special. This weekend, also, a new baby is born in this congregation, a daughter, Quinn, born to Allison Wines. We keep her and baby Quinn in prayer as they await a heart surgery in the coming weeks. This is how we live as God's people. And we hold each other in the suffering and the pains and the ups and the downs, and we rejoice together in the celebrations. We long for better times, but we can do nothing else but take what comes and pray and trust in the Lord and hold space for the tears and the roller coaster of life. Pray for the peace of God in every situation. So last Sunday, we heard from the prophet Jeremiah's letter to the people in exile. Today, Ezekiel shares a vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. He's inside Babylon along with those taken away to a foreign land after the destruction of the temple and the deportation of most of the population of the northern kingdom. They were 900 miles away from home. Their temple had been destroyed. The future was difficult to imagine. How could they be faithful? Everything they had built was gone. And families were devastated and divided and the warriors were defeated. So they searched for meaning, for purpose, for answers. This is actually the third vision given to Ezekiel, a member of a priestly family who turned prophet. Before this, he had been whisked away and shown a vision of the heavens opened. And then he saw a scroll and he spoke this message of judgment, God's judgment on the people. They turned away from their God. And unlike Amos, who accused the leaders of committing injustice, Ezekiel comes from a little bit of a different angle. He charges the priests with abominations in the temple. They'd gone after other gods, led the people astray, and now the nation was in peril. It was in ruin, and Ezekiel is brought to this valley, Mesopotamia. We can just picture it, right? Where bones cover the land as far as the eye can see. So we know it's not just the bones of those ones who maybe fought against the Babylonians. These bones have been here a long time, drying out. No moisture in them. They are the bones of the whole nation, the great family promised to Abraham. The whole nation laid to waste. And the voice of the Holy One speaks. Mortal. Can these bones live? Unlikely. They're dry bones. The birds have picked them clean. Who knows how long they've been there, but the prophet won't answer. The only one who can know is the Lord. 
changes we've faced in the last couple of decades, the last couple of years, the last couple of months, are enough to make us wonder what our future will look like. Everything changing around us so fast. We see it in political instability, disagreements, new diseases, changing economic realities, the decline of the church. We have billionaires going to space and neighbors evicted, living in tents on vacant lots. We hold both of these things. Droughts, fires, floods, famine on the horizon. We don't have water. We're going to have a hard time making food. We might look around and despair and cry out to the Lord and wonder the same things. What about these bones? Can these bones live? The Lord knows. Whenever we have faced trials in this nation, people have come together. This week, another school shooting. Uneasiness as the Supreme Court takes up issues of abortion, reproductive rights. We feel isolated. We are dried up. We are so often afraid, pulled apart. How can we be remembered? How can we find peace together? The word of God brings the promise. I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and I will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin. Put breath in you and you will live. God will bring life over and over and over again, even when we are fully dried up and wasting away and worried and wondering about the future, unsure of how to move forward or angry and abused and drawn away from the path we thought we were on. Life is possible. Hope is available. Peace comes from this life breathing word of God. We can't see the future, but we know God's plans are good. We know God longs for justice. God calls us to be faithful and gives us hope. The same God is the one who puts us back together, builds us up after we've been broken down and left to languish in the valleys in our lives. That's who God is. That breath that God breathes into us, it turns and gives glory back to God so that you will know that I am the Lord. That's the promise. That's the why. It knits us into one community, pieces us together. We might not know how or when it will happen, but every week, every week in this place, we proclaim the good news of God who sent us a Savior who died, who rose again from death. We say that we believe in resurrection. We just don't like the dying part so much. But we are people who live and move in the world because God breathes life into us. Death and life are tied together. Our laments and our celebrations come moment by moment, one day here, another day down. It's our reality. I mean, even in the midst of the storms and the everyday battles we face, you can find those little moments of peace, a time to giggle, <laughs> a time to celebrate, a time to enjoy one another's company. They're little resurrections. Even when we're pushed down, we still rise. Just as we see the needs in our community of those who are marginalized, whether because of the color of their skin or sexual orientation or physical abilities or financial status or those suffering from mental health issues, homelessness or addiction, we can know that the Lord will bring peace. The Lord will save us again. The Lord has spoken and will act. It's not an uncommon occurrence, but Mary can attest to this. I was in the office this week, and there's a person out, outside, and I hear, I hear the ranting, the screaming. Sounds like someone is fighting, arguing, in pain. Well, the windows and the walls are, are thin out there. It sounds like they're right in front of the office. 
So I go outside and see what's going on. And if you were here last Sunday, you never know what's going to happen. And this person was in some kind of mental distress. Intoxicated, I don't know. I had seen them before and we'd spoken once or twice. And I just walked up and I, I said, hey, how you doing? Immediately, they got real quiet. So would you like some water? Sure, have some water, okay. Came back out, just sat, let my presence be known, listened for a bit, and they went on their way. Was that a moment of peace? I don't know. It diffused whatever was going on at the moment, but we have that power together just to be present for one another in our distress, in our difficulties. This word for peace in Greek, irene, means, I'm sure it's a terrible uh, pronunciation, I'm sure. But it literally can mean to tie together, to join together. I thought about when we pronounce two people joined in marriage, there's peace. When a family welcomes a new child, there's a new kind of peace, just not at bedtime. When a community begins to come together and heal after a tragedy, like Waukesha, Wisconsin, or Oxford, Michigan, or Las Vegas, Nevada, peace begins. In Hebrew, we hear the word shalom. It means peace. It means wholeness. It means everything back together as one. Can these bones live? God knows. And we notice in the story, it's not all at once. First, the bones come together, the grinding of bone against bone, the rattling of bones together. Then sinew and flesh. But they need something else. They need the breath. Without it, they're just bags of bones, lifeless, inert, ineffective zombies, I guess. When the breath comes, then the bodies really come alive. God is breathing life into our dry bones every morning, every moment. And that breath of God, it fills us, it moves us in faith through every lament, every pain and hardship we and our neighbors suffer. God's peace is with us in Jesus. Jesus who joins us together through his death and resurrection in the waters of baptism is present in our suffering and pieces us together at the table as a community of faith in this place as we hear this life-giving word and sends us. He sends us to bring our peace out into the world in our community. So as the weather warms up and things hopefully calm down a little bit, we'll be moving more and more out into the streets, into the places where the people who we are to share life together live and act at the soccer field, at the coffee shops, the libraries and the schools and the events in the city to share the peace that we have and to show the living hope that God has given us in Jesus Christ. But for now, this Advent, as we hear this story again, we hear the promises and we receive the breath of God in our lives. We receive it in us that we would be reanimated to live and serve and rise again as the family of faith here in this place, here in the heart of the city. God's peace is with us, given to us, breathed into us through the Holy Spirit. And that peace, it binds us to him and each one of us to each other in love for the sake of our neighbors and for eternity. We're tied together with our Savior, the one who was and is and is to come. Jesus, our peace. Amen.